Welcome back once again to Power Director Made Simple. Today's video is going to continue our use of titles and the various options for the text that can appear there. But before we go any farther, remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to now look at the title created in the last video, the one about Mary Contrary on the skateboard. I'm going to drag that down to track number two. It appears right now on an all black background because there is no video or other image above it. We started with the default title and all we did on that was to change the font face, the font color, and the font size. We also changed the text, and then we centered the entire text box on the screen. If we play the title right now, nothing seems to happen. The text just appears and remains there for the duration of the title. But while sometimes this might be all that is wanted, we can make it a little more energetic and impressive especially knowing that the skateboard video shows action and its audio was loud and dynamic. So what if we wanted each of the three lines to appear one by one? We're going to select the title. We're going to hit F2 to open it in Title Designer. We will immediately notice that there's only one text box containing all three lines of text. We need to split this up into three separate text boxes. We're going to start by selecting all of Venice, California. We're going to hit Control X to cut it. Then we're going to go up here and click on plus T to add another text box. And we're going to hit Control V to paste it. Let's move it down to the bottom just out of our way for the time being. We're going to select September 20th, 23. Control X to cut it. Add another text box. Control V to paste that. And let's move it close to where we want it. And let's select the Venice, move it up to close to where we want it. But if you hover your mouse over Mary Contrary, you can see there's a large text box. That's because the two carriage returns are still there. So let's just click on that text box towards the bottom and we're going to hit backspace twice to remove them. Now let's see if we can align these. There is no easy way in PowerDirector to click and wave a magic wand to have all three spaced out perfectly. So I would recommend you first move each round until the placement on the screen and the vertical spacing between each looks equal. And that's pretty equal for vertically. Next, click on the longest line, Venice, California. We're going to come down here and we're going to click on horizontally center it. Now we need to make these other two text boxes align with the left edge here. Let's select September 20th. You can move your arrow keys for a little bit more control over movement. And that's about right. We're going to click on Mary Contrary and just a little bit more to the right and that's pretty much a line. Now, let's go back down to the timeline. Let's close up these parameters for each text object. And do you notice a small problem? The line that says Venice, California has become the second text object instead of the third. That's because we split it and we created a new text box for it before we created the line with the date. So the solution is very simple. Just along the left side, click on the one with the date, drag it up to number two, and drop it right there. Now they're in their proper order of number one, number two, number three, which matches what we have on screen. Let's get the timing right as to when object number two and object number three should appear. We have a total of three text objects that need to appear at various times on the screen. The total duration for this title is only five seconds. 
So 5 divided by 3 is 1 second and 20 frames. If you multiply the 1 second and 20 frames by 3, you get 3 seconds and 60 frames, which works out to the same as 5 seconds. So our timing interval is 1 second and 20 frames. So now let's set the timing for the lines. The first object, Mary Contrary, automatically appears at the beginning, so we want its time to start at zero. We'll leave it alone just where it is. The second object, September 20th, needs to start at 1 minute and 20 frames. We're going to select it and move the left side of the green bar over to 1 minute and 20 frames. We're going to need to move the third object, which is the location, Venice, California, to twice that amount, or 2 seconds and 40 frames, which works out to 3 minutes and 10 frames. Select number 3, drag it to 3 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm sorry, 3 minutes and 10 frames. <laughs> Hit home and click play. And we'll see if each of these lines appear one by one. There's Mary Contrary. There's the date. And there's the location. Just what we want. Hey, but wait, we've got more. Let's not quit here. All of the text just appears on screen with no special movements. Let's add some pizzazz to this. Let's click on text object number one and move over to the animation tab on the far left of the title designer. Of the three possible choices, let's click on in animation. This is going to determine how text enters and appears on the screen. There are almost 80 different effects to choose from. Because we started this with the default title, the pre-designated in animation was no effect, which explains why the text just simply appeared on the screen. Let's choose something fancier like, oh, let's try flip. And you can see Mary Contrary flipped around. Yeah, that's not what we really want. That's too weird. So let's go down and try something like slide up. That might look pretty good. While we are here, we're going to do the same for the other two objects on the timeline. Click on number two and give it a effect of slide up. Click on number three, give it a slide up. Now we're going to hit play and let's see what happens now. Mary Contrary comes sliding up. There's the date and there's the location. Everything is just the way we wanted, so hit OK to return to PowerDirector. From our media room, let's move down the first skateboard video down to track one. Okay, now let's hit play. Now, that's a nice looking title to begin the movie, but our movie masterpiece isn't complete without the typical ending credits. I'll go back up to the title room, and I have a custom title called Ending Credits. I can look for it in the All Content, or I can scroll down to a category called Credits and Scroll. There it is right there, ending credits. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag it down to the end of our movie. Now, our movie is almost complete. When we play the last part of the video, we'll see all that text information flow by, just like a Hollywood movie. In the next video, we'll look at ways to modify and improve that fast scrolling ending credits title, as well as how to add some graphics and sound to it. 
In the meantime, keep experimenting around with the various animations available to you for editing your titles. You'll find some that are very professional looking and quite a few others that are really just too gimmicky. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.